everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Market Outlook for Futures and Forex, where we take a look at the big six markets. The main goal of the outlook is to create a plan for tomorrow so that we can be as prepared as possible for tomorrow's price action. Now, first of all, if you haven't already, make sure to swing on over to SlingshotFutures.com. And once you're on SlingshotFutures.com, all you have to do is scroll down and you will find the join registration link. So you can join the Daily Outlook newsletter and you'll never miss it. Whenever it comes out, we'll send it straight to your inbox so that you won't miss anything. Uh, and that way, uh, you'll have everything that we're looking for the next day before uh, everybody else knows about it. So make sure to sign up for that if you haven't already. Now, jumping in here, let's take a look at the futures market first, and we'll start with gold. Gold overall has been range-bound, right? It's pretty obvious that we've been range-bound. If we zoom out a little bit here, we can see that the market was very, very bearish back on, you know, the 11th or so, found a bunch of follow-through, and since that follow-through has happened, we really haven't gone any further. We're just kind of stuck down here in this back-and-forth range. Now, the back-and-forth range that we have here we need to be looking for two major things. When we're in a range, what do we know? Well, we're we're in a range. Any breakout attempt of the highs or the lows, very likely going to fail. 80% of the time they fail. So we need to be looking to sell high and we need to be looking to buy low. And even more importantly, we need to stay out of the middle. Right? If we're in the middle of a range, you're asking for trouble, which is exactly where we are right now. So at the moment, in terms of location, gold's in a terrible location. But that being said, we know that the areas of interest are above and below us. Above us, we're looking to sell between 1227.2 up to 28.4, and maybe even a little bit higher if they want to come back to some of these other major swing high areas. The biggest one would be way up here, and that would be kind of the, the final line in the sand, if you will, uh, all the way up here at 37.6. But in the short term, looking for selling resistance between 27.2 to 28.4. And if the market just nosedives all the way back down to the low, you're looking for support underneath us between 12 12.1 down to 12 11 even a couple things to note here we do have a possible bear channel working its way lower if you mark up the highs here and here transpose that level down to the bottom arguably you could cut the distance and you'll probably find it supporting there but taking the overall very bottom peak putting the level there if we do come down that might be another area of interest so don't be surprised if it does slam lower we are in a bear trend you expect the lows to break out further than you expect the highs to so you're looking for a slight breakout before you start looking to cycle it back up the better opportunity would be looking to sell the highs we're in a bear trend we've been in a bear trend for a very long time Looking to sell the highs makes a little bit more sense here. If you are going to buy the lows, don't do it too aggressively because you could get into some trouble. Uh, but right now, in terms of location, we have to wait on gold, waiting for it to get to the highs or the lows before we start jumping in to anything. Next up is going to be crude oil. Now, crude oil had a massive, massive turn from the lows. A beautiful bear trend working all morning, diving lower, nice little flag break out again, went into a little bit of consolidation here, dive down again, very aggressive momentum to the downside. And then we found a little bit of a wedge bottom and the wedge broke out. Now, when that wedge broke out, a lot of times one of two things is going to happen. It's going to break out and just not stop, which is what we had here, or it's going to break out, pull back, and you'll find support to get back in. In this case, that pullback never happened. Not well, it did, but not until, you know, way after the breakout has already succeeded. So the fact that that breakout was so aggressive to the upside, we really need to be looking to buy low. We don't want to buy high anymore because we're already at the highs. In fact, we just have a twin reversal forming at the highs. That's a good sign that buyers who've been buying in this entire move up are starting to take profit. So I do not want to be buying up here. This is an area of resistance that I do not want to play around with. There will be short-term sellers who are even selling into this knowing that a correction is likely to happen to pull back. Now, in the pullback, that's where things start getting a little bit juicy. We may not be able to get as far down as this, but between 43.30 down to 43.26, that is a kill zone. That is what I'm looking for. I love that area right now to be a potential buyer. That being said, because of the aggression of this move, it may not make it that far. You may only end up with a quick little twin reversal off the bottom of the wedge, maybe an EMA pullback, etc. So there will be some short-term possibilities to be able to jump in on, but the big one that I'm looking for is between 43.30 down to 43.26. 
So that takes care of crude oil. Let's jump on into the S&P. Now, the S&P is, uh, well, a little bit range bound, a little bit back and forth. One interesting thing that happened here in the S&P is we had a big weekend gap, right? That big weekend gap finally got the test way later in the day. Keep in mind that this opened up yesterday on Sunday. Uh, it finally tested that gap at around six o'clock. Now, when that tested, you'll notice that level is no joke. Right, We've been bouncing off of that level all over the place uh, on both support side and resistance side. And now they're just starting to fluctuate around it again. So it's going to be tough to find any opportunities while we're just jammed into that level. That being said, the one thing that really does stand out in terms of the location is that we still have a decent amount of pending bearishness. Yes, we have a big area of support and resistance on that weekend gap at 60 half. But all things considered, we're still making lower lows. We're still making lower highs. Everything is still pointing to the downside. The only thing that really stands out is that the bears obviously stopped wanting to sell this far down. After all of that diving to the lows, you'll usually find a nice two-legged correction, maybe a third leg to it, and then the inevitable target is back down to the lows. Now, the big objective to the downside, which is still open, is going to be down at 2151.75, as well as an even larger target down to 2140. Six half. Those are the big boys. Those are the massive targets that every seller who have been selling the highs, right? And selling not only here, not only here, but even back here, right? They've been selling into that move, looking for this drive lower. So expect that if we do get down to that location, 51 and three quarter and 46 and a half will be massive levels of support, potentially strong enough to find a small reversal. Now at the moment, we're kind of in the middle. What I would really like to see here is for this wedge to kind of complete, right? Get a break of one side, maybe retest the highs, trap the highs, and then turn it back down. Maybe a twin reversal above this most recent peak at 64. Right now, we're kind of in the area that we want to be sellers, but because we're playing around in the 60 half area, you'd much rather want to sell a little bit further up or wait for it to break down and sell the breakout to try to get continuation to the lows. So that's kind of where we are in the S&P, sort of in a holding pattern at the moment, just waiting to see what it wants to do up here. So now let's jump into the currencies. The first one on the list, the Euro USD, beautiful bearish movement uh, and, and very common across the board for the, for the currencies, lots of gapping, weekend gaps that are completely unfilled yet, right? Those weekend gaps being unfilled and being so bearish and driving away from it, it might not be until Friday before something like this gets filled. But until this is filled, there's going to be that magnet that's drawing price back to it. It wants to pull price back to it because there's a lot of unfinished business here. So that level in this case, for the euro usd on my chart it's saying 1.08538 1 1.05 there we go 538 that is the big level that we need to be keeping an eye on now in terms of you know how big of a level this is going to be versus you know what the reaction is i mean if it just rocket ships all the way up here in a very aggressive manner the buyers will have spent all of their ammunition they're not going to have anything left to defend this level now if it grinds its way higher and it doesn't get up there till friday you'll probably still get a bounce but that would weaken the amount of resistance that you'll have there Either way, though, big objective magnet at 85.38. Now, currently, we're still really far away from that. We have a nice bear trend. We're still making the lower highs, lower lows. Everything is still pointing to the downside, but we are finding a slight little wedge. We're starting to get some higher lows in here, getting a little bit of reversal. The buyers are buying into the lows, and more likely, honestly, the sellers are probably taking profit, right? I mean, that was a very aggressive drive lower that we had pretty much at the end of the drive down and you can see it didn't really continue much further before it found a big reversal all the way back up. So the fact that we're just kind of pinging back and forth, we're seeing that same scenario, right? We had this big drop towards the end of a trend, big drop towards the end of a trend, can't continue and we're looking for it to go back the other direction. Very frequently what you'll see is this move will double itself up. And that's pretty much right where they found that objective. So if this is going to turn higher, you're going to be looking for a doubling up of that move, which puts resistance smack in the middle of the already strong area of resistance between 75.14 up to 75.92. Not to mention the one-to-one -one move up, the doubling up with an ABCD leg in there as well. Lots of levels of resistance inside this little band here to start shorting it right back down to the lows. 
Taking a look at the pound dollar next, same kind of situation as the euro. We have a nice downtrend working its way lower. Uh, this one is a little bit more kind of in the middle. This is where people will run into a little bit of a problem because they want to get, you know, they miss the move. They want to get in. They want to get in aggressively, but we're not in a good place to do so. We are still making lower lows. We are still making lower highs. The trend is definitely down, but like we saw in the euro, we're starting to see a little bit of a wedge form. In this case, for the pound, it's quite a bit more than just a little wedge. Uh, this is a very strong one. Right, And we're now just breaking out of the highs. The issue with the breakout here is you are right in the middle. <laughs> now, because this is so back and forth, cycles off the low, big correction up. Cycles off the low, big correction up. All of these pullbacks are taking back you know, 80% of the move in, in pretty much one shot. So you would expect to see about the same thing. Right? If this is going to take back about that distance, and this is going to take back about that distance, notice how close these two look. They're probably going to take back about that distance, right? And that's where you get that resistance area, 25,372 to 25,560, looking for sellers to want to come in into that same equidistant failure zone and then look for selling back down to a new low. Now, the lows are getting weaker. If we draw a box from low to low, and then we draw a subsequent box to the next low, notice that this one's about half the size. So if we get another breakout, it's probably not going to be by much anymore because the sellers are obviously losing faith in the downside. It doesn't look like it's going to continue that much. So what I would love to see is a push back up into this area of resistance, find some selling opportunities, drive the market down, and just look for a quick little new low. Nothing major, just a nice little poke its head between, you know, below the low and maybe the channel low, and that probably will be where you start seeing a little bit of a bounce. And then let's wrap up on the dollar yen. Now the dollar yen obviously is in negative correlation to the rest of the markets we just looked at. So a very strong bull trend now running higher, very aggressive. A lot of that kicked off last night at around, yeah, you know, seven or eight o'clock with that big run higher. Now this big run higher, if we measure this up, generally speaking, you're going to see this move double itself up, sometimes triple itself up. In this case, this has actually gone four times up, right? I mean, we've had a huge move higher off of that initial bullishness. It hasn't come back. Now it did get stuck here for a little while. You can definitely see that. Uh, but all in all, we're still very bullish. And even after it went into a range for a little while, it still managed to break higher pull back, hold a higher low, and go back up again. So the buyers are very obviously interested in this. The problem is we don't want to buy high anymore. We're seeing the highs getting weaker and weaker and weaker, very similar to what we just looked at. These highs, now they can't even make a new high, right? They're finding a double top up here. So chances are, if they do go back up to the highs, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to make a quick trap high and fail all the way back down, or they're going to form a lower high something like a wedge top in that area, and then find a move back down into an area of support. Now, that may be support off the rising area of the channel. It may be support in the band at the bottom. Either way, though, we know that buying here is going to be short-term only, and you're pretty much only looking for it to go back to the highs and probably even sub-highs, so lower-high type of scenario. What I would really like to see, aside from short-term buying pressure here, would be a nice trap low, a twin reversal or something like that, either out of the wedge and back up or out of the channel and back up and if it really wants to get a correction a move back down into support between 108034 down to 107935 and even better would be a trap underneath the lows get a nice dip underneath there and then run it right back up towards the highs that would be the dream scenario that i would be looking for at around 107935 so that's going to do it for the overall daily outlook. Hopefully you had a good day of trading today. I know a lot of people were saying today was a little bit weird in terms of how everything moved, but as long as you stick with those rules, you make a plan, you follow the plan, and you execute it accordingly, you'll be just fine. So until tomorrow, enjoy the rest of the night, and we will see you all next time.